Thank you. I need you guys to know something. And I'm gonna tell you the truth, and don't get freaked out. This is gonna be my last special for a minute. It's all good, it's all good. Listen, listen to me. I, I did it in Detroit for that reason. That's right. You wanna know why? Because I talked so much shit about Detroit in the first special, I figured I might as well do the last special here. Sorry about that, by the way. <laughs> First of all, before I even start, I want to say that I'm rich and famous. <laughs> and, and, and the only reason I say that is because the last 17 months were hell, and I cannot imagine what everybody went through, but I'm happy to see you, and I'm happy you're well, and I hope everyone you love is okay. <laughs> I don't want you to worry about me. I'm, I'm vaccinated, I uh, got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. <laughs> I gotta admit, that's probably the most niggerish decision I've made in a long time. <laughs> I walk in the doctor like, give me the third best option. I'll have what the homeless people are having. <laughs> so far, so good. And I know you probably heard on the news, I did, I did get coronavirus. And it was, it was something else. Like, okay, first of all, when the doctor told me I had coronavirus, I, I gotta tell you, I was surprised how it made me feel. I felt dirty. <laughs> I felt gross. Cause I had been walking around Texas, just touching doorknobs and shit, hands all moist. <laughs> Tipping niggas with cash, here, take this to your family. I must have killed thousands of people <laughs> just trying to get tonight's show together. So I hope you appreciate it, because a lot of niggas died for me to get this one off. <laughs> I hadn't felt that dirty in a long time. Last time I can remember feeling dirty like that, man, I must have been a little boy. I was being molested by a preacher. <laughs> oh, don't feel bad for me. I liked it. I used to get a kick out of coming in that fella's face. Well, he asked me to do it. <laughs> they make a quarantine. I had to quarantine for 10 days at least. He's gonna have to stay in the room. I didn't go nowhere. And, and, and it started making me nuts because I would just sit in the room and, and watch videos all day. Now, you know what I was watching? And I hate to say this, but there was a lot of videos, sadly, of black people <laughs> beating up Asians for no reason. <laughs> All these attacks were unprovoked. I couldn't believe it. And I was sitting in the room watching this shit. It was stressing me out. I was stressed already because the whole time when you get coronavirus, at least the first five days, you wait to see how sick you're gonna get. <laughs> and it turns out, and this is true, I didn't get sick at all. Not a cough, not a booger, not a fever, nothing. Look at me. I am the Magic Johnson of coronavirus. I just sat in the crib and got stronger all week. But I was stressed because I kept watching these videos of my beloved black people beating up my beloved Asian people and being so cruel. And the whole time I watched those videos, this is fucked up, but I couldn't help but feel like uh, when I saw these brothers beating these Asians up, it's probably what's happening inside of my body. <laughs> I didn't get sick. <laughs> I also saw a lot of videos of UFOs. I mean, what the fuck has been going on with that shit? These niggas are here. These UFOs keep coming to Earth, and it made me think of an idea for a movie. It sounds dumb, but hear me out. In my movie idea, we find out that these aliens are originally from Earth. That they're from an ancient civilization that achieved interstellar travel and left the Earth thousands of years ago. Some other planet they go to, and things go terrible for them in the other planet. So they come back to Earth, decide that they want to claim the Earth for their very own. It's a pretty good plotline, huh? 
I call it space juice. than that. Hang in there. <laughs> it's gonna get way worse than that. Then I thought of an idea for a children's book. I actually wrote it. It's coming out soon. The book is designed to help parents teach their children about racism, which, if you're a parent, you know, is an impossible concept to teach to a child. But I'm doing it. The book is about a big, strong, beautiful black man with a benign, regular-ass white name. And he has a white speaking voice. So whenever this motherfucker calls to get a reservation at a restaurant, oh, he gets the reservation. <laughs> that name and that voice, who could resist him? Now, I should tell you, this black man is literally an actual giant. And he's a strong dude. And when he shows up to them restaurants, they see that big, giant black dude, they say, you can't come in here. And, and, and they call the police. <laughs> and, and, and in every installment of the book, the police come and, and they always shoot them. <laughs> but remember, no, no, remember, this guy is a giant. These bullets don't kill him. They don't even hurt him. They just break his heart. <laughs> it's called Clifford the Big Black Nigger. Anyone? <laughs> This is my last special because I have an objective tonight. I came here tonight because this body of work that I've done on Netflix, I'm going to complete. All the questions you might have had about all these jokes I've said in the last few years, I hope to answer tonight. And I'd like to start by addressing the LBGTQ community directly. <laughs> 